Today is fun with liquid nitrogen day. And what is liquid nitrogen? Well, again, nitrogen is the main component of air. So the air we breathe has mostly nitrogen in it. So if you get it really cold, nitrogen is a gas. And when it gets cold enough, it becomes a liquid. When we talked about different states of matter, you saw some of that. So nitrogen, liquid nitrogen, is basically really cold something. And, and, and the fact that it's nitrogen is not really going to come into play today. What we want to talk about the fact that it's really cold. And we will use this liquid nitrogen to make other stuff really cold and talk about what happens. Well, we know that things, when they're colder, tend to be solids. Well, this is a piece of rubber, and it's mostly solid. It mostly stays the same shape. But if we get it particularly cold, let's see what happens. We stick it in the liquid nitrogen. First of all, the cool thing is it shoots liquid nitrogen everywhere. Woo, check that out. All right, and now we look at the cold part here. And it's totally stiff on the end. It doesn't bend anymore. All right, yeah, this is the cold, warm part, and this is the cold part. It doesn't bend. So when you get something cold, it becomes far more rigid than normal. Because again, temperature has to do with how fast atoms are moving around. So they're wiggling around fairly fast. So if they're moving around fairly fast, they have room to give. But if you get them really cold, they condense down really tightly together and, and hold on to each other quite tight. So they don't have much room to give, and, and, and they become very stiff. Let's see that in another instance. This is a spring made out of lead. And if you know anything about lead, lead's a very soft metal. If I can crush this in my, I can totally crush it in my hand and make it flat, all right? Well, I'm going to use it to hold up this one kilogram mass. And normally, it's just going to stretch all over the place. But how do I make something stiffer? Get it really cold. So let's put it in liquid nitrogen. OK, we put it in liquid nitrogen. The atoms of lead will get very cold, they'll move around less, and become quite stiff. And once it's totally cooled off, there it is, it's all cooled off. I'm now going to hang it up here. Then if we hang our mass from it, it's a spring and it supports it. It bounces back and up and down even a little bit. And as it warms up, it will become softer. So I can help it warm up a little bit. Well, or we can just let it sit here. And we're back. Check it out. It's slowly stretching. You can see that up here it's getting pretty soft as it warms up. And the whole spring is becoming more extended, right? Because when it was cold, it was very stiff, and it wasn't bending much. And now that it's warm, it's less stiff, becoming very soft, and it's just falling. Now we have this lovely lead bell. Listen to it ring. Ah, oh, such a wonderful noise. Well, why does lead not ring as a bell? It's don't make lead bells. Well, because, again, it's soft. So when the little clapper hits the bell, right, and the bell tries to ring, all the vibrations are just damped by, by the lead being so soft. So what we need to do is to make the bell more rigid. So if we lower that down into some liquid nitrogen, so now that the bell is nice and cold, it sounds at least OK, not great. But whereas if it was warm, it didn't make any noise at all. That's because now the lead is more stiff. Now that it so we're going to take a little small piece of rubber here, right? and it's sort of flexible. It's not really flexible, but it's, very, uh, it's pretty bendy. And I'm going to hammer this rubber right into this wood. Why? Well, because if I put it in liquid nitrogen, then all the atoms will make it very, well, it won't be pliable anymore. It'll be very hard. It will not. Here we go. OK, we've got our triangle, fresh from liquid nitrogen, nice and cold. We hammer it. Boom, it's stuck in the board, hammered it board. Piece of rubber, hammered it right into a board because it's so cold and stiff. Another property of cold things is when you get gases cold, right, they start to go towards liquid. So one of the things is gases can expand or contract, right? They change their volume. And the colder they are, the less volume they take up. 
So we've got a lot of cold here. Well, you know, liquid nitrogen is very cold, so we can pour it on our balloon. A little magic trick here. And I'll show you a very cool demo, so to speak. Pour a little liquid nitrogen on the balloon. Secretly wave my hand over the top of it. And then I'll show you the miracle of a compressed balloon. And all we have to do is warm it back up again, and it'll reinflate itself. Whee! All right? So there it is, reinflated. And we can stick it back in and cool it off again if we want. All right. Time for a finale. Now, I'm a pretty mean racquetball player, but if it's cold out, racquetball doesn't work so well. This racquetball, once again made of rubber, bounces just fine. But what happens if we get it too cold? And I hit a mean serve. Take a really cold racquetball and put it in a hard serve, and you lose a racquetball. Now remember, liquid nitrogen is very cold and can easily burn you. It can give you freezer burn. It can freeze your finger and you'll fall off. That'd be bad. Okay, so be careful with liquid nitrogen. But it is pretty cool and it helps us understand what happens to things when they get really cold. So this is Dr. Carlson and my friend, the really sad cold balloon, signing off. Now we have a very cold triangle, and if I'm very careful, here is our triangle, very cold. <laughs> Here's our triangle. I got it on the board. I gotta practice this. Danger. We hammer it. Boom, it's stuck in the board.